We've got our new 2021 Ford Bronco, first edition, guys, that we've been daily driving for just a couple of weeks now. It's loaded. It's got every single convenience and comfort feature, has every off-road option that you can get on one of these things. I mean, you can't ask for any more. Or could you ask for more? We'll get to that in a minute. We're the Miser Brothers. And we're gonna go through the 16 positives and negatives that you need to know about the new Bronco as a daily driver. Let's get started with actually getting in the vehicle. Now, that should be easy on a daily driver. It's not easy on a Sasquatch Bronco. I'm gonna show you why in a second, and I'm gonna show you what we're doing here in about a week to make this a little bit easier. With the Sasquatch package, you get almost a two inch lift and it comes standard with 35 inch tires, which obviously gets the vehicle up in the air a little bit more. 33s come on your base and all the way up and anything without Sasquatch. But guys, this is, I'm six, seven, no, 5'11". I'm gonna show you um, how difficult it is because this is a long ways off the ground right here. Uh, there's no step. The Sasquatch package in the first edition comes with a rock slider, so there's actually nothing to put my foot on to get up in here. And when I do that, it's like, that's pretty inconvenient. It's a long ways up, and when you go to get in, you have to grab the steering wheel to pull yourself in. I'm just gonna, instead of explaining it, let me just show you getting in. I can't grab this because I can't pull my butt in from this grab handle. There's not another grab handle over inside the vehicle. I gotta use the steering wheel, but I've also gotta get under it. Like that. Now, a couple other little things of note. There's a big painted exposed door sill right here. We're actually gonna be putting PPF paint protective film on that very soon. Um, our dad's even shorter than us and he daily drives this thing more than we do. But let's talk about side steps to be able to get into this bad boy. You can put a step on this that drops down about this far and it would make it a little bit easier to have something a few inches down before you stepped into the vehicle. But you lose all your ground clearance and you bought a Bronco because you kind of want to go off road sometimes. If you just put a step on, you lose your rock slider. We've ordered a rock slider product that actually has a step that swings down built into a rock slider. So it will still support the weight of the vehicle when you go off-roading, but it'll drop a step down 12 inches. It'll come all the way down to here. We'll have an install video of that very soon. Um, that's kind of a must if you have the Sasquatch, is to have something to help you get up in the Bronco. If you're gonna make it your daily driver and you wanna off-road a little bit, you're gonna need that clearance, but you gotta have something to help you get in this rig. Next up, the overall size of the Bronco. This is built on a Ranger platform, so it's body on frame. More on that in just a few minutes. This vehicle is great size for being a daily driver. It has plenty of room and storage. It's not too small, it's not too big. It's easy to park. It's not like trying to daily drive a, a huge Tahoe, a full size something. It's not so small that you have a hard time with seating for extra passengers and being able to store enough stuff. You also sit up high enough that you don't feel like you're being pushed around on the road and you can see down the highway well. So it's really an all around good size for a vehicle. We're gonna head down the road and show you some things while we're driving in just a second. And I promise in this video, we're gonna take all four doors and most of the top off and show you what that looks like, packing those in a bag, putting them in the very back of the vehicle. That's something that no other vehicle can do is take the doors off and put them in the rear. Big plus over the Wrangler. But let me show you another gripe. This is something that as a daily driver is gonna matter, as an off-roader, doesn't matter at all, but there's no memory presets on this vehicle and i didn't really think about that until about the third day in driving it and every time you hop in and hop out when you turn the vehicle off the seat doesn't actually slide back and the steering wheel go up and get out of your way this does have electric seats which most broncos don't most of them are you got to control the slide front back underneath you and you got to reach down here and grab a handle for the for the i guess the back part to articulate but let me show you this when i get in here at the place that I'm gonna drive this at, my knees are very close to the steering wheel. And to be able to get out, it's pretty tough. And I'm kinda fat, like let's just call it what it is. But I'm 5'11", probably normal size American, and it's kinda hard to get out of here with how tight this is. Um, if this thing would slide back and get out of your way, like pretty much every other $62,000 vehicle does, um, and then also there's no one, two or one, two, three over here. So if two different people are driving it, there's not a button you can set to get your seat setting back to where it was. Steering wheel is also manual underneath. It will 
get up and out of your way. Now, I get it. That's being extremely nitpicky, and that's not something that matters when you go to buy a Bronco. So all my Bronco guys out there and girls, don't freak out. I'm just talking about this in regards to daily drivability, getting in and out a lot, like say you're in sales like I used to be, it's gonna be a pain in your butt. Before we get to the next number, guys, if you enjoy this type of content, Broncos, F-150s, muscle cars, go ahead and hit subscribe down below. Give us a thumbs up on the video. It really helps us out with YouTube. All right, next up, let's talk about this windshield. <laughs> it's pretty straight up and down and probably more apt to get hit with a rock and get and get chipped or get broken than your average vehicle i'd say i think it's it, it, again we keep comparing this back to a wrangler that's the thing it was designed to compete with the most a wrangler and a g-wagon i would say are probably the only two vehicles that are going to have a windshield as steep as this yeah and it's not that it gets hit with rocks more often it's that when it gets hit with a rock it's not laid back enough to be able to deflect that rock and send it on over the top of the vehicle when it hits it's, it's gonna it's, hit flush it's hitting pretty flat <laughs> yep. now it's still slick glass but it's hitting hard now i've already got it's not a full-blown pop you know that started to spider out but i've already got a little chip in the windshield from driving it to the garage to film this video today um it's not something you sit and buff out but when you clean this thing spotless again you're gonna see it and on an f-150 or an suv or a car with anything laid back more it's not gonna happen so our word of advice on that is if you daily drive this, make sure that you've got good glass protection on your insurance plan, that you don't have to pay a full deductible to be able to fix a windshield, because these are gonna be three, four, they're, 500 bucks. They're probably more than that now, if, especially if it's one with the camera system in it. Yep. It's a whole lot more expensive. They yep. Once they replace the windshield, usually now you have to do a realignment of the uh, um, Lane keep, Lane keep assist and, 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 uh, and all that kind and of stuff. On and on. So it's going to be a thousand bucks or more once you get into that to replace the windshield. So. It's a problem. Next up, this thing is a legit Billy Goat mixed with a Sasquatch, like the real Billy Goat and the real Sasquatch. It will legit go over anything, go anywhere. I mean, you're not going to go push trees down in your brand new daily driver Bronco that you got MSRP in here at the end of 2021, but really nowhere if you live on a you know bad farm with mud roads and gravel driveways and uh any anything you want to do if you need to hop a curb whatever this thing will do any of that you're not going to be able to do any of that in a normal daily driver car most suvs are coming with big wheels small tires this thing will legit go anywhere so we're not talking about it from an off-road standpoint but from an on-road standpoint and the little things you may have to do if you're at a ball game and you need to leave out and somebody's double parked you you probably got more options yeah. on how you're going to be able to get out you don't have to worry about it's snowing or getting slick yep it's going to handle that uh, it's probably going to be one of your better uh, drivers in the rain yep. uh, with, if you, especially if you switch it into four all you just feel confident knowing that you can get down any road you want to with yep. this thing no matter what so next up let's talk about the noise in cabin from the wind that sort of thing any off-road vehicle like this that has removable doors removable roof um, it's not got as much sound deadening as a standard vehicle yep. and you're gonna have problems with a little bit of wind noise they've done a pretty good job sealing everything up but there's a pretty steady whoosh sound yep. in here i can hear like little rattles maybe like just the smallest don't take this to mean that this thing's a rattle bucket because right. it's better than most um, but you can hear little bits of air coming here and there the way the windows seal the way these panels seal like you're going to have some of that if it doesn't bother you or if you have the radio on all the time anyway it's not going to be a problem but don't buy this thinking you're buying a mercedes s class that's like perfectly quiet yeah you're not going to get in and slam the door and it sound like you're in a bank vault nope. in this thing and you know you're not going to mistake this for a, a luxury car sound no. level in here it is what it is let's talk about tire noise before we move all the way out of the sound noise deals tire noise is a little different than wind noise because that's the noise generated from whatever tire you have on the vehicle and that's something you can change if you just get an outer banks trim level at 33s you know a non sasquatch bronco it's going to be quieter the tires are smaller they're less mud terrainy like it's going to be a little bit less tire noise 
Now, off-road tires have come, they, they, I guess you'd say hybrid tires. They're off-road, on-road. They've come a long ways, guys. We run Nitto Ridge Grapplers on our stuff a lot, and it's you don't make a big compromise but you uh, on-road, but you pick up a lot of off-road capability. Now, if you go switch out your 33s or 35s that come on the Bronco, for some mud tires, whether it be 33s, 35s, 37s, and you get true mud train tires. It's gonna be loud. It's gonna <laughs> womp womp, it's catching air differently, like it's gonna be a whole different set of problems. But as the Bronco comes, the tires aren't a problem like they are when you throw some, some mud tires on anything. So that being said, the tires that come on the Sasquatch models of the Bronco, they do have a little bit of noise. I'm about to come through a sharper curve and you get that body rolling. The noise picks up a little bit. Yep. You Nothing hear, you're probably going to hear on camera right there. Just a little wah, it's, and it's catching more air because they're humongous. It's not that big of a deal, but keep that in mind if you plan on daily driving this. I think the cool factor of how they look outweighs the little bit of tire noise you have. Well, not open. No, this thing won't open up, man. Where's the button to get it to pop up? To get this to pop up? Oh yeah, we're kidding. But yeah. If you're carrying groceries out or you're carrying both arms, you know, you got both arms full, you head it out to the Bronco and you're going to put everything in the back. It's not like a button. It's head. not like your average SUV where you either have the foot thing that pops it up or you can come over here and get that button, you know, you push up underneath and it just pops up and opens for you. You're going to have to get a hold of this handle and pull it. And it does have the uh, lock feature here and the uh, put your cup your hand in here to Not get sure it done. Not sure all of them do, but the first edition First does. edition does. Don't know if that's on a lower trim level, but then you've got to take this swinging door and swing it out and it's, you know. One thing cool is this shock will let you stop it at any level you want to, or you can just go all the way super open. I mean, look how wide this it goes. It does go wide. And it'll go to where the whole thing is open. But Once you get it popped, you could get in here and pull the old get out of my way thing and set some stuff down but you also have this that you got to pop up as well if you got something really large going in so that being said it's just not as convenient as a lift gate in the back on most of your suvs these days i think it's way cooler though it is way cooler they make some pretty awesome accessories that fit on the doors and everything um and just while we're back here this wasn't planned but you can flip these middle seats down and i mean you've got a big humongous square of room to be able to put stuff in right here and you can do that on most suvs but this thing opening all the way up i'm like it's pretty cool um another thing to keep in mind is with this swinging out if you are parked in a parking spot and you pull through and somebody comes up and parks behind you you can't get in the back of this thing to this put your is, groceries uh, in. I'm going to show you how far that is. That's, that's just something eight. to remember, guys. Back up just a little. That's like, really this deep. This is four foot. Yep. Whereas it's if this thing four and a half feet, if this man. thing opened up right here, it would be out of the way. So, so like your standard lift gates, if somebody, if you pulled into a parking spot and somebody pulled in behind you, you could still hit that lift gate and it's going to clear. With this kind of door, you're going to have to move your vehicle before you can put your stuff in the back. One last thing, you do have to shut this in the order you opened it. So glass goes down first, then the door gets closed. Otherwise, <laughs> you can shut the door, but then you can't, can't shut, shut the, the glass. glass. I guess you could drive down the road with the glass open. You could do that. That's something you cool can't uh, do in some other stuff. Next up is something very important, and that is how does this thing actually ride on the road? Now, a lot of people, Wrangler people especially, would say this thing's a piece of junk. You don't want it it sucks off road because they've got <laughs> a solid axle front and rear and this thing has independent suspension on all four corners so they may have a point on the off-road stuff and that's not what this video is about but on road i don't think a jeep wrangler can touch a bronco and how comfortable it is we just ran over some giant manholes that hadn't been paved around yet probably like five inches of dip you couldn't even tell we wrote, drove over we you know i gunned it laughingly and hit them pretty hard and it just Choose you can't right even up. tell you you drove over anything in this thing so it's very cushy um serious off-roaders may you know bemoan the live axle thing but if you've watched any of the videos from the bronco off rodeo where people are basically ford showing people how you can push this thing to the limits 
it'll do a lot of cool stuff. We've got all kinds of switches up here and all kinds of modes to do just about anything you'd ever want to do off road. So I don't think you're missing anything by not having the live axle. I think you're picking up a lot as where most of your miles are going to be on the road if you're daily driving. It's freaking awesome. Everything moves as it should. It's cushy. It feels great. I mean, and if you need more capability, uh, depending on what options you get, you can step up and get the sway bar disconnect, which is going to get you some more travel when you're off-road. But I mean, yeah, we uh, will have off-road videos and we're going to show all those features off, but just not in this video. I will say I've had a Raptor back in, I guess, 18. And this drives a lot like a rafter because he's yes. he's slowing down right now you get some body roll you just hit the dive. brakes pretty hard the nose goes down you floor it you, the front nose tips up yep um as you come through curves you get a little body roll but you feel it feels planted the whole time feels like it can take the curve faster i mean i haven't put this thing to the edge yet at all um, we have before yeah, we, <laughs> in we, a Bronco video. Overall, this body on frame, it's on the Ranger platform, is pretty doggone good. I would say it's better than the Wrangler because the suspension is so much more advanced than what you can get on a Wrangler out of the box. You can probably add a bunch of stuff, but like... It's still going to be a solid axle and it's not going to drive like this. That's right. So this may be one of the best on-road driving, off-road vehicles money can buy yeah if that makes sense yeah let's talk about resale value and that's got to be important when you're talking about a daily driver because you put the most miles on your daily driver right that's right if you're going to go 12 15 20 000 miles a year and keep a vehicle for three to four years you're going to end up with 60 to 80 000 miles on the vehicle and if you do that to a brand new car that you buy it's garbage it's going to depreciate pretty bad yep, yep. you're not going to get much for it we're gonna put this in the category with the Wrangler again. That's kind of, the Wrangler and the Toyota truck seem to be the kings of holding value. And I think this is gonna be in that ballpark. This may even be better for a couple of years, and here's why. Yep. Can you buy a three-year-old Bronco right now that has 60,000 miles on it at a discount? It doesn't exist. Don't exist. So if you want a Bronco right now, you gotta buy one with a thousand to maybe 5,000 miles or buy something new that's 20 to 30 grand over. This is late 21 when we're filming this, so the market's stupid right now. If you're watching this years down the road, I hope it's gotten better if I'm talking to somebody there in the future. But the, the resale values are going to be good on this for a while. Even if you put the miles on there, I think it's gonna be something that you're gonna get a lot of your money back out of, especially compared to any mid-size SUV that looks like everything else on the road. Because this looks so different, mm. it's got a bigger demand for it. You look different when you ride down the road in a Bronco. We're gonna talk about cool factor in just a second at another point. Now, all of this that we've been talking about applies to someone who orders a Bronco and pays sticker price for it, or maybe five grand over, something yep. like that. If you go out and spend 30 grand over on one of these right now, you just ate up all your resale value. You're never going to recoup that in the future. Unless you bought it, you bought it because you got money that's disposable and you, and had you to wanted have it. one. Now, if a bomb hits the Bronco factory <laughs> and they don't make any for the next five years, like a nuclear bomb, then yeah, the resale value is going to stay up on these, even if you paid 30 grand over. Next up, if you daily drive, that means you're in and out, you're parking a lot, uh, the mall, the, the Dollar General. Hey, we just pulled into a Dollar General. So we're gonna show you the camera system and sensors on this particular model are through the roof, like as far as how cool it makes everything. But would you say that like the general overall size of this is not bad for parking? It's not bad and it's clearly defined. You can see your nose and you feel like uh, you know where your vehicle's at. It's not one where with a sloping hood that you really can't tell where you're at and that sort yep. of thing. So so if I push this camera button right here, which not all of them are gonna have, this has everything, gigantic screen, and then we get an all around view and we get a really good front nose view. Like I'm legit looking at the bumper right here. So I can mm -hmm. see what that is. I could park this thing right up against the building. So as he pulls up to this parking spot that we're pulling into, you can legit see the lines that we're parking on. He's lined his yellow lines up almost perfectly on those parking lines. You can see the vehicles beside you. Old Rusty over there. 
Um, so, I mean, that, that doesn't get any easier. And if he does get too close to something, you do have the beep, beep, beep sensors. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, catching the front clip of your vehicle on the curb with a Bronco. It's not even a possibility. They don't make a curb high <laughs> enough to hit the front of your Bronco on the bottom of the bash plate or whatever. Yeah, you got to stay off the building. Yeah, but, but if you don't hit the building, you're fine. Building, yeah. Now, the other thing would be, uh, if you're parking in a tight spot with curbs, you're not going to curb your big old Bronco, especially if you got the Sasquatch. 35 inch tires, big old meats on little bitty 17 inch rims, instead of your, you know, your Tahoe or most of your cars now, 20 inch rim with a little bitty rubber band mm -hmm. street tire. Those are curb city, Asking especially. To be curb, yep. Yeah, go through a Starbucks or a Chick Fil A. Starbucks is the worst. Yeah. Tell me, comment down <laughs> below, Starbucks. If you don't agree that Starbucks have the worst drive-throughs ever. Yep. I don't like to call it Starbucks. I like to call it Four Bucks. If, <laughs> <laughs> if you've be... been through Four Bucks and you've curbed your rims, let us know. If your wife has, let us know. If you just hate going to the Starbucks drive-thru, let us know down in the comments. Even the base 33-inch tires that come on 17-inch wheels, those are hard to curb too. But overall, like as far as parking, especially if you get the tech on this, like an Outer Banks with the tech package, or up, you're gonna not have any problems. You're gonna find that this is easier to park than most cars. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. No, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Whoa! So if we're talking about tech features, this does have everything in cab you would want. We're gonna show you the big screen and kind of how you can hook your cell phone up and all that stuff in just a second. It does have lane keep, it's got collision avoidance, it's got all the tech you would get on any other, you know, upper end vehicle, especially for daily driving, that does make your life easier when you're daily driving. The new Sync 4 system's awesome. 12 inch screen, it's the same exact setup that's in your new 21 F-150. Same setup. Um, you got the most time with one of these. Is it awesome? So. I'd say it's way more user friendly than Sync 3 was. The touch screen is a real touch screen, not the old capacitive type that you had to really uh, press pretty hard to make things work. It's less buggy in my opinion. You've got obviously big navigation, but Which you can you hit can. this button and go full screen with it. And that's a big, nice area. So when you zoom in, you've got a lot of latitude there. The phone works flawlessly. Audio gives you the ability to have XM, obviously, but you've got everything else you need. You can go straight off your phone. You can download apps and play through your favorite music services. Um, there's a ton of stuff like settings on settings on settings, guys. Like it goes on for days as far as the way that you can customize this. I'll point out a couple other things here in cab. You've got two charging ports right here, whether it be USB-C or USB. And that's gonna hook up your phone if you use the wired Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. You also have wireless Android Auto and CarPlay in these uh, Broncos. I don't um, know why you would do this for daily driving, but there's power up here, both USB-C and USB, a little connection point here. So if we go off-roading in this thing, you can put a true Garmin up here that can, you know, communicate even if this were for some reason to go out like you can attach your gopro up here you can do all that cool stuff doesn't really have anything to do with daily driving but it's there your main display right behind the steering wheel is pretty awesome it's pretty much i guess three quarters of its digital then you've got a small part there that's a gauge for um for speed um obviously i mentioned that you've got lane keep you've got collision avoidance you've got adaptive cruise control Obviously, you can hit these buttons and um, talk and tell it all the things you want it to do if you're smart enough to figure all that out. He is. I don't <laughs> fool with that stuff. Um, but it'll do switch music. It'll do everything right here, right here, right here. Really not leaving anything to be desired, would you say? There's a button for everything in, in the new Bronco, um, especially on the higher trim levels. Even the lower trim levels with the smaller screen, uh, it's a good experience, and there's not really any features i found to just be missing in something in this price range i could think of one tech thing it does kind of miss and that's the memory seats we're about to hop out and get on to our next point and i got to do like move the steering wheel push the seat back and then flop out to be able to get out of here so it would be cool if i had memory seats next point can we have a moment of silence because the bronco doesn't have air conditioned seats
yes we are going to be taking this door off and these roof panels off here in just a minute and that will definitely cool you down but all the seat options in the broncos don't have holes in them with the air conditioned part they do heat really well the steering wheel heats really well all the vent placements are great it's not as good in the rear but it's pretty good and for a daily driver this seat's all that really matters we're big old boys and we love our air conditioned seats even in the winter i love my air conditioned seats now this is the most premium luxe seats you can get in the bronco it's black onyx uh interior and you can get marine grade, marine grade vinyl that you could actually spray out in here and it's really comfortable and you can get cloth and it's really comfortable um but no air conditioned seats boo i know it's a bronco it's supposed to be rugged and a lot of you guys are going to give us a lot of hate in the comments about that but we're talking about daily driving and it is super comfortable from a hot and cold standpoint inside this is just like a oh man next up let's talk about the sound system in this thing now this is the top of the line b and o system and so there's the lower end model and the top of the line b and o um functionality wise that we talked about the sync 4 there's plenty of tech and ease of using your cell phone to play anything you want there's sirius xm all that good stuff that's nice sound quality wise if you don't get the b and o it's gonna it's garbage it's garbage yeah, yeah it sucks. it's bad and if you get that lower end system and you put in a big sound bar in the back you're gonna lose a ton of visibility with the top level b and o system you do have two speaker pods in the back right there and right over there if you get the lower end model and opt for a sound bar it's gonna cover that much room all the way across i haven't found one yet that has a type of design that doesn't uh, really kill your visibility out the back so if you can tell the big 35 inch tire with a third brake light over the top of it already takes up a part of your visibility and when you put a sound bar down because it drops down from the mount just a little bit and then it covers this area we were in one that had that whole setup it's really not your your exterior looking through your rearview mirror is non-existent if you have to put a sound bar it's in. a little slit back there to see what's behind another thing to note is because these doors come off so easily they don't put a lot of features on these. You'll see that you just get a piece of netting uh, to keep these nice and slim, but you don't get speakers in the doors. That's just something to keep in mind. Next up is cool factor and exclusivity. I would go so far as to say that we've had a C8 vet. We got a GT500. He's got the brand new F150. We got the OJ, not, I mean, uh, we got the OG 96 Bronco, not OJ. Uh, so we got a lot of cool stuff, but this thing turns more heads than anything. It does. Yeah, when people see this at a gas station, they come and talk to you. If they see you coming down the road, they give you a thumbs up. I mean... It's Jeep people too. We've been stopped at a stop sign and the guy cutting, turning in beside us stop and just have to talk to us to five take minute a look conversation yeah. like he wouldn't want to ask like one question or say that's cool like he had to know what the heck is that that looks like an old bronco they nailed it on the look guys this looks like a 70s era bronco um like a lot of people say it should have looked like the big bodied 80s and 90s it shouldn't have if they took an f-150 and they yeah. covered the back of it and made it a two-door instead of a four-door nobody would buy it no this is the one you want and this is what has got everybody going nuts as far as exclusivity i would argue that early in this production cycle there are more bentley bentegas on the road than there are new broncos that's how freaking exclusive this thing is because they've had production problems on getting them out the door come on but, ship manufacturers <laughs> <laughs> and the guy that screwed the tops up like come yeah on. i mean yeah he got a, he on. got a bonus <laughs> and then left he should have got fired and then buried not not buried but you know but this thing is super exclusive right now and i think it will be for a long time a jeep is very recognizable when you see it going down the road because it's shaped way different than everything else the bronco is that with maybe more refinement and the ford twist and the ford touch on that as promised we're going to remove the doors in the top now we're not going to bore you with the whole process but we are going to show you the high points really quick and then show you a time lapse of all those coming off and then show you why this is the ultimate cool factor because we're actually going to put them in these bags and the doors are going to load up in the back of the bronco we've not done this yet in theory that's how easy. it's going to go should, should be, be simple easy, man everything's easy yeah first show, show them the tool kit so instead of an owner's manual you get a digital owner's manual but okay. you do get a tool kit 
it's a wrench and a couple sockets but uh, it's all the stuff you need to take off the, the mirrors if you wanted to take them off don't know why you do that because mirrors aren't it's, on the it's a pro that they stay on instead of coming off with the doors like on the jeep but anyway they give you a little tool kit so let's take it off real quick guys because we're gonna like i said time lapse this there's a bolt here a bolt here and then a one connect quick connect that like just pulls right out and then a door actually goes ahead and slams down on that and seals that up so if you were to get wet while you're off-roading not a problem but if this is your daily driver and you're talking about the cool factor for on-road just having all this off is cool having it with you so you can put it back on later makes it even cooler <laughs> not easy let's tell them about it we got top off we got four doors off it's pretty cool i'd say cool factor way up on that and the fact that we've got the doors stored in the back is pretty cool now should we tell them about the problems first of all you're going to want to watch the video that ford made on how to take the doors off and put them in the back of the vehicle we'll put a link to that in the description if you don't watch that first, you are gonna to be totally lost like we were. We just started wrenching, pulling bolts out, unplugging stuff, didn't even know what we were doing. First door we pulled off, ding, got a little tiny chip in the door. The order and process of how you have to put the doors in the back is exact. You have to do it in the exact steps. It will not work, they will not go in if you do it outside of that order. The other thing I'll say, and I'm gonna show those to you in the back in just a second, we got the top off and it's just that front part, not the middle top. It will come off, but it's not gonna store in the vehicle. Uh, we didn't think about it, but the top is off and I guess we could lay it down in the top over there. It's made to secure in behind the back seat and it's about as big as a door when you put both left and right side in there. So I don't think that's gonna go in and all these doors go in. It shows it like in a position number one we can show you that on, on all the bags. On you know, the bags, on the other side of this bag, there's a little diagram and it tells you exactly where that door goes in order. Yep. So you gotta follow that and then every strap, um, and you can't see it on this one unfortunately, I think we can show it here. There's a number on there yep. and if you're watching the video, it'll tell you exactly where to put each strap number. But guys, I did not think that was going in there and by golly, they are secured, strapped in, shuts, goes down the road. Tops. If you took four people with you, you don't have room to put the roof in here too, because it needs to go in the back seat or be left at home, or you could take the roof off and put it in the back by itself, but you're not putting four doors in and a roof. Oh man, you look really cool in that thing. This is part of the cool factor, baby. You gotta have a Bronco to know. I gotta say, I can't wait till the summer, uh, actually just next spring, because I think doors off, all the whole top off, it's gonna be awesome when it's hot. All right, so here's my take. Is the Bronco a great daily driver? I'm gonna say absolutely. If you want the look and you want something that's you know spectacular right now, it's different, it's got super big cool factor, it's not terrible to get in and out of, and we're gonna do some things to help that. So a couple more grand and we've got the ultimate off-roading daily driver here's my take the bronco is not the best daily driver in the world but it is a pretty good daily driver because of all its uniqueness it's not like anything else on the road so it's going to give you something that nobody else has and yes it has all the features you need to be a good daily driver it's probably just not the best at any of those things let us know what you guys think down in the comments Hey guys, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right over here next. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace.